Hello and welcome back to Battle Lord Modded and we are going to be uh, participating in this siege defense right here. Okay, so now here's the reason for this because obviously in the last part of the previous episode I basically said, you know what, we're just going to skip over this because we've already seen that we kind of defeated a similar sized army and I thought, well, maybe that's going to be a little bit repetitive. However, someone actually brought a very... Um, a, a very strong point across to me and that basically was we don't really get to see a lot of siege defenses and as a result that's why we're here yes indeed anyway what we have also done is um we have also disabled the fill stacks mod if you take a look uh, in the description it's still going to be there in the description because i kind of want people to see you know which mods we've used generally but i wanted to remove it because it is i i think at least i mean i think it's really cool don't get me wrong i think it's really cool but obviously with the addition of distinguished service and the addition of all of these other things that are making our companions really really strong it's basically making the enemy lords and i'm talking about phil stacks here uh, Phil Stacks is making the enemy lords much, much weaker than they would otherwise be. And as a result, we are having a slightly easier time of things. And generally, obviously, I don't really mind whether we do have an easier time. But I want it to be entertaining. And I want it to be fun for everyone involved. Myself, you, everyone. So... Yeah, that's also the reason why I have decided to disable it, because it is just... Um, while, in my opinion, that's probably one of the coolest mods i found. I mean, it may seem like that sounds, you know, preposterous, because it is just such a simple... A simple mod, and it's very, um, you know, sort of like straightforward about what it does. But the whole point of it is that it basically makes it possible for the AI to play on the same level as the player in terms of being able to recruit units and things like that. Because in comparison, now they are going to start bringing units that are much stronger than you would otherwise imagine. And they are going to uh, generally create armies that are, well, I don't want to say magically because I, I, I think that's a bit of a fallacy. I can't, I can't really say magically because they don't just, you know, bring them out of thin air most of the time. But what I wanted to say is that they just generally are a bit too fast by default, at least in my opinion. I feel like they're a little bit too fast to replenish their armies, but maybe they need to do that. You know, especially in a, a series like this where we have enhanced progression for our companions, especially. Uh, Barney has leveled up quite nicely. I feel I feel like his speed of level is is quite good. I don't think it's too much. And I don't think it's too slow. I, I, I'm, maybe it's a little bit too fast. I'm not sure. But generally, I feel like our companions are leveling up really, really quickly. And I mean, obviously, that's the point because companions can die. And um, we, we're just very lucky that that hasn't happened yet because uh, someone actually also mentioned that they are also using the Distinguished Service mod and um, you've had one death so far and you have a handful of companions as well. Well, we have more than a handful, but still. Um, yeah, so generally uh, it can happen that they, they do die, the Distinguished Service companions, because obviously I was posing the question, do I have death enabled still and yes i i do i checked <laughs> i checked it just before this episode and uh yeah we still have it enabled i'm not entirely sure why it would be disabled to be honest because i haven't changed anything since we began this series but anyway um yeah that's that's basically it that's the update that i wanted to give you about the whole fill stacks mod thing uh personally i think that if you're going to be playing with a very Mm, should we say native slash vanilla game loadout in terms of mods then i personally believe that fill stacks is probably one of the best mods you can use for a relatively bare bones playthrough so if you really want to you know uh, participate in a campaign where everyone's on sort of like a level playing field and all that matters is 
your own strategy, your own prowess on, on the battlefield, then I think that Phil Stacks is great. But the way that it stands right now, because we have such a strong army and we are so, well, I wouldn't say that we are unstoppable, that's for sure. I think we are definitely weak to certain things, but we've also got to bear in mind here that if you, if you think about what is currently going on, you think about these guys are actually attacking us and bear in mind that obviously the defense right the defense has an overwhelming advantage every single time in a siege the defense is always going to be able to uh well basically eliminate more units of the opponent than the offensive force is going to be able to do because they are within the walls you know they're within the walls they don't have to really do anything they basically just have to kill enemies who uh, try to scale the walls and things like that. That's basically it. Whereas the offense has to do everything. They have to move the siege towers, they have to move the battering rams and, and all that wonderful stuff. And that obviously makes everything much easier for the, for the defensive forces because they're basically able to do whatever they want. They can pretty much, yeah, as I said, just do whatever they want. They can pretty much just relax. But um, yeah, otherwise, I am very pleased to say that we seem to have achieved victory here, which is pretty cool. Because uh, I'm actually telling my people to charge in now as well, because I don't see a reason why we wouldn't. Murder them. There we go. Thank you very much. Ow. Yeah, well, I, I, I say ow, but I didn't really take that much damage, because this guy was... I mean, he, I, I have some pretty decent armor on, and he was using a... Uh, relatively slow speed bonus and things like that, so yeah, it's not not surprising. And there is indeed a victory for us. Okay, so Batani and Fion champions. Wow, I'm actually surprised that we have a bunch of these. Okay, yeah, so we are going to be, uh, I suppose, selecting both of them. And, um, oh yeah, so what did someone say now? I think someone said that I should probably, um, if I'm going to do like a, a caravan or something like that again, if I'm going to get a companion for a caravan, I think that's what you mentioned. I'm actually not sure if I remember that correctly, but generally um, the better way to go about things is tactics. Tactics for vassals might also be something very, very important because that means that simulations are going to be much easier for them because every single time they enter combat simulation is how it's going to be conducted rather than you know actual real time so tactics is actually fantastic and and that's a good point so it's kind of a little bit um a little bit problematic because i want to do everything you know what i mean i want to do everything i want to do medicine i want to do athletics i want to do steward i want to do leadership i want to do everything so it's uh it's kind of difficult anyway we're just going to do that i suppose and we're going to do tactics and steward. There we go. I Did I? Wait a minute. Did I only do two skills for that other guy? Yeah, I think I only did two skills for that other fellow. Okay, well, my mistake. It's fine. It's not a problem. We have a lot of companions as it is right now. And unless they start, you know, dropping like flies, we should be absolutely fine with our companion population as it stands at the moment. Okay, so there we go. We're just going to be releasing a bunch of people. I actually don't know whether I should even bother releasing them, to be honest, because at this point, is that good? You know, is that actually a good idea? Because if I release them, they're just going to be coming back and attacking us just that much faster. But then I also think to myself, well, maybe it's a good idea to release them because then I'm going to have a, a higher chance of dealing with them in the future. Obviously, I've already said that I don't really want to... Um, try to uh, persuade any of these vassals to join me. But the only thing that I do want to do is potentially speak to them and then persuade them over to us and then kick them out. That's basically it. Because if they have a fief, for example, that is going to... <laughs> well, it's very cutthroat and very ruthless for us to do that. But that might be very effective. That's all I'm getting at. That is all I'm getting at. All right. So um, let me see actually what we can do here. Because I'm going to take a look. And we're going to see who's a friend of ours. Okay. Okay. So we have a bunch of friends right here. But we need to make sure that they are uh, they are actually a part of Landia. Okay. Oh, look at this guy. 
Aldrich. Hello there, sir. Don't you um don't you have something? I think he owns he owns Japan Castle. Isn't that the thing that we literally just took? So he he obviously took this back. Okay. Uh what about Calatild? Okay, yes. Yes, I think Calatild could could probably benefit from speaking with us. So let's see what happens with that. Um, is my improved garrison actually set up here, by the way? Because I don't know about that. Yes, it is indeed set up here. I'm thinking we're actually just going to increase this to 300. I feel like we probably need the um, additional units in, in the garrison here. So we're just going to wait here for some time because you never know. There might be another army that comes out of nowhere and is like, Oh, hello there. Can, can we can we help you? You know, sort of thing. Anyway, um, yeah. Okay. So now everyone is actually going to start recruiting units from garrisons and it may be uh, it may be one of those things where i decide you know what i'm just going to re-enable fill stacks because you uh, as far as i'm aware you can um enable and disable that mod at will and you don't actually have to worry about your save game in the least because it just changes around a couple of very small values in comparison to adding entire factions to the game for example so that's the reason anyway let's have a look there hello um uh, oh you're in an army oh okay hmm of course you are <laughs> uh isn't that always the case yeah that is indeed always the case okay so i think praven is going to be absolutely fine let me uh, take a look and see whether we have some more friends here that i could potentially speak to what about this guy he likes us a bunch and he's got two castles all right, let's send that to him. Maybe he's going to be able to uh, possibly join us. But bear in mind. Oh, 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 no, he's he's happy. He's happy to speak to me. OK, I was very much anticipating him being in an army as well. OK, I am the rightful ruler of this land. I would like your support. There we go. Critical success. Wait a minute. Are the conversations easier? Wait a minute. It feels to me like the conversations have been made easier. Is that just me? No, I think that I think that is indeed the case because I thought that there were four four points needed to succeed, but now there's only three. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, that's actually really interesting. That is really, really interesting. Okay, fantastic. Um, Yeah, I, I guess I'm just going to... Oh, wow, he's cheap. What? I can get him to join for 12,000? Okay. Uh, sure. All right. Um, Yeah, so now that he's joined, look at this. We've gotten these two castles, right? Druimor Castle and Ormond Fard Castle. Now, what I'm going to do... <laughs> can I... Can I, uh, while I'm in an encounter, oh, okay, let, let me just move real fast. Okay, yeah, so let me actually just take a quick look here. If this works, ah, uh, seems to have worked. Look at that. We now have the castles. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very evil in that regard. Wow. That, uh, that was a very evil thing to do. I'm so sorry, Mr. Ekarand. He loves us still, though. Don't worry. Look at him. He's at 100 relation with us. Okay. He thanked me. He thanked me for the pleasure of interacting and stealing his, his fiefs, basically. That, that is exactly what happened. Okay, Mr. Belgir, I will attempt to do the same thing with you, sir. Would you... <laughs> this is actually very interesting. Kind of, uh, kind of surprised that. Oh, oh, we actually have the ability to do this as well. Okay, yeah, I'm really surprised that we even had the opportunity to speak to him. To be fair, there we go. There's 100% chance both times for Mr. Belgear, and I am going to be able to persuade him with one dinar. Can I? I can't steal money from him. No, I can't steal money from him. Okay, that's actually kind of a shame, but we're going to give him one dinar, and um, there you go. Now we have Ox Hall, and, um, well, you, you know what I'm going to do next, right? Yes, indeed. I am going to do this. We are going to expel them. Boom. There you go. They're completely gone. That's it. 
And so as a result, we now have, look at this, two castles and Oxhall itself. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm very intrigued by this particular strategy. Hecard, let me see if you are part of an army. I think he's over here. Yes, yes, indeed. And that is his army as far as I'm aware. So yes, he's not he's not actually going to listen to me at all, but that's absolutely fine because he's very close by and I'm going to murder him then. Hello there, sir. I mean, technically he's not even in an army, to be honest. He's literally just by himself, as you can see, but theoretically he is. So obviously that makes things a little bit difficult, but we're just going to eliminate him, take a bunch of prisoners, and then we're going to uh, probably not even bother besieging that, to be honest. There is really no need. Ah, hello there. Okay, th yeah, so now here's the thing. I might be able to achieve victory against really strong armies when in a siege. And I'm talking about on defense here. But I might not be able to do it when the enemy is on the same level playing field in regards to actual real battles in, in, instead of sieges. So we might have some issues with that. Anyway, I've leveled up my tactic skill. Let's have a look here. What do I want to go for? Plus one troop joins you when fighting in hideouts. That's useless in my opinion. Uh, what else can we go for? Your army loses cohesion, 5% slower, 10%, uh, well, 10, plus 10 party size. I actually am... What? Okay, uh, I... Okay, I have no... I, I, I really don't know. I really don't know. I, I would assume that Tail Worlds is going to do a lot of reworks when it comes to the perks. Because there are a lot of perks that just don't really make any sense. I mean, yeah, okay, sure, sure. You know, if you want to spec into tactics, that's absolutely fine. But just just look at this, okay? If you're the captain of your mm, of your troops, so let's say you're giving this particular perk to a companion... Troops in your formation gain 5% movement speed bonus when they are less than 15 soldiers. Okay, so now let's assume that you have a companion. Let's assume that you have uh, less than 15 soldiers in terms of infantry, I guess, right? Infantry? I don't know whether the movement speed bonus applies to cavalry or not, whether that applies to their horses or anything, but... Well, let's just say that it's infantry. So let's say you have less than 15 infantry, which is extremely unlikely, to be honest, because at the time that you have 75 tactics, you're probably going to have around 40, 50, maybe 60, maybe even more units in your army. And almost every single, if not every single, recruit volunteer is classified as infantry. So unless cavalry also gains the movement speed, uh, this is not really that useful, and it kind of makes me a bit sad, but oh well. Plus 10 to party size, that sounds pretty good to me as it is. 3% uh, more damage bonus in all battle simulations. Yeah, I'm going to be taking that. That sounds good to me. And we're going to be increasing my tactic skill even further now. All right, so now we've got to be a little bit careful here as well, because I really do not want to be attacked by Bertliana, and um, yeah, I mean, theoretically, we can actually create our, our very own, um, you know, <laughs> we can create our very own uh, clan now if we want to, right? So I'm actually thinking, who are we going to turn into that? I think Dareem, right? Dareem has good medicine steward and all that stuff, so yeah, I think we're probably going to make him our first vassal, and... Let's do it. There we go. Fantastic. You deserve a fief. Okay, so I'm going to give him... I'm not going to give him anything too large just yet, because I'm a little bit worried about him potentially, you know, stabbing us in the back. You never know whether that's going to happen. So I'm going to give him Ormondfard Castle. There we go. Yes. Okay, we could. Oh, oh no. Uh, okay. Um, uh, oh, uh, this is. Oh, I don't know why I always forget about this, but every single time I literally have to name him, and I have no idea. Uh, uh, clan name: Dareem. <sighs> uh, I'm thinking only of joke names at this point. Yes. Okay, got it. Mirad. Mirad. There we are. 
He is part of the Murad clan now. And can you... Okay, so now, bonus points and props to those of you that actually work out why I chose that name. And um, it is... Uh, <laughs> it is stupid. Oh, yes, it is. Very, very stupid. Okay. Anyway, there we go. We were able to now make a new clan. And I actually want to speak to him real fast. Because someone actually mentioned that I should give him a lot of money. Okay. Because he's otherwise going to leave very, very easily. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm actually going to give him a lot of money. I'm going to give him 232,000. There you go. We're going to give him 232,000. Hopefully he's going to stick around as a result of this and he's not going to end up leaving way too soon. Uh, let's just cross our fingers and hope about that. Anyway, Mr. Heckard, I would like to be able to speak to you, Mr. Heckard. Are you, are you available? Yes, I think he is available, actually. Okay. So let me see, is he still in an army? He is not. Okay, this is fantastic. If this works, this is gonna be great. Yep, look at that. Okay, um, I don't know what it is, but I feel like persuasion conversations might be a little bit too simple now. And I know, I know I was complaining uh, a long time ago about how persuasion was really difficult. But now I think it might be a little bit too straightforward, a little bit too easy. Um, which is, uh, I, it could be due to my mods, actually. There might be a mod that actually makes it easier to um, work with these guys. I think all it does, though, is make the cost a little bit lower. I didn't want them to make it this low, but yeah, apparently that is exactly what's happening. So anyway, there you go. Okay, so we are now having, well, Ostakun. Ostakun is now ours. And, uh, yeah, I will be, well, expelling him once again. Uh, can I, why can't I do that? Why can't I do that? What, what, what is actually going on there? Why can't I expel him? What? Are you, are you serious right now? Okay, I can do this, but I can't do that. Wait, maybe this is... Oh, I don't have any influence. Okay, I had no idea that I needed influence because this menu was actually covering it. Okay, my bad. My bad. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, wait a minute, it's, it's, it's broken. The button is broken. No, no, it's just the fact that I don't have enough, you know, don't have enough influence for that. Oh, look at that. Dareem was actually taken prisoner. What a classic. Isn't that a, a super classic, you know, like, like a super classic thing for the AI to do? They are so incredibly useless sometimes. It really makes me pretty sad, but oh well, never mind. I mean, I'm pretty happy that we have, um, you know, a clan that is actually led by one of our companions. But I'm kind of sad at the same time that he got himself taken prisoner so incredibly quickly. But oh well, never mind. We're just going to bombard Japan Castle a little bit here. And then we're probably going to be heading in. I actually don't know whether I should just auto-resolve this or whether I should just go in and then just do fast mode or something like that. I think fast mode is probably going to result in less casualties. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let's just do that. Bear in mind, the walls are down, so we can literally just enter and then um, have a grand old time. Hello there, sir. Wow. That is some damage.
All right, there we go. That was a nice victory for us. And we I, I don't think we lost too many units, so I'm pretty happy with that. And we have some Vlandian sergeants that leveled up as well, which is really nice. We're going to go for some athletics here, tactics, and I, I suppose medicine for one of them. And then for the other one, we'll go for steward tactics and athletics for him. There we go. Oh, Polmark the Little. Look at that. Polmark the Little. Maybe it's Polmark's brother or something like that. Maybe we can... We can say that's his brother or whatever. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see what happens after this because I am obviously now going to get attacked, or at least I would assume that I'm going to get attacked by that fellow outside. But we'll see. Maybe I won't, maybe I will. Let's have a look. Okay, so do I want to claim this or do I want it to go to someone else? I mean, technically I could want I, I mean, I could always give it to someone, right? I could always give it to someone. I mean, how's my trade skill doing, actually? I can't even check that right now. I'm just going to claim it for the moment. And we're going to take a look at how my trade skill is doing. It's at 280. Okay, I'm almost at 300. But it's uh, slow going. I don't know, even know whether I have a caravan up and running right now, to be honest. Okay, we're going to go for... Leadership doesn't really give me that much. Um, I, I suppose I'll just go for Heroic Leader because troops in your formation cause 10% more morale penalty when they kill an enemy. I think that's pretty nice. And we have tactics here as well. No morale penalty for disorganized state and battles in Sally Out and when being attacked. That's actually pretty amazing, but we usually have an, an, an overabundance of morale, so it's not really necessary. Ah, this is really nice in my opinion. Decrease the duration of the disorganized state after breaking sieges and raids. I personally like that a whole bunch. I think that's one of the one of the better perks in the tactics tree. That's just my opinion, of course. Anyway, uh, there's a bunch of people in the garrison there. Not too many, but I am going to be placing a lot of prisoners in there. And hopefully these prisoners will, thanks to improved garrison, be recruited over time. And then they will be going in there. I'm just going to put 240 in there as well. Actually, you know what? Let's put 200. I think 240 might be a bit... Uh, I don't know. might be a bit overkill. I don't know. Uh, we'll just make that tier 4. There we go. All right. So let's just wait over some time. That guy's running away. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Fantastic. And we now have 200 influence. Okay. So as you can see, Hecard was actually eliminated. Um... So we're going to propose that he be expelled, and boom, we just force that through straight away, and he is out of there. Oh yes, he is out of there. All right, so now, well, look at look at how it's going. Look at that. Look at how it's going. That's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, that's pretty crazy, and I mean, obviously, we could not... Um, I, I don't think we can get Kalatild. I think it's going to be a bit difficult. If she's still in an army, I, I, I think it's highly unlikely. Let's see. Are you still in an army? Yep, she's still in an army. Okay, well. I mean, that is to be expected, of course. They are trying to murder us. Uh, wait a minute. Who owns Galend? Who actually owns Galend right here? Oh, Durthart himself. Okay, well, that's really going to work, isn't it? Yes, me speaking to him is certainly going to work. Okay, Bertliana is going to be coming over here, no doubt. I'm going to see if I can do battle with this guy. Help out the village a little bit. Just do a nice little auto-resolve there. Let him go as well. Take the prisoners because we're going to be placing those in the uh, prisoners' hold of Japan. And then we're going to see if that can maybe help us a little bit. Ethan Bold has won the tournament. Very nice. He's doing a good, a very good job. And we're going to go into the, the dungeon real fast. Place these units in there. And then we're just going to wait here for some time. Now bear in mind, this could go really really badly because one of the walls has not been repaired yeah because here's the thing obviously if you yourself as the player decide that you want to bombard the walls and destroy them to make it easier for you to get inside then obviously by proxy and logically you're going to assume that the ai is also going to take advantage of that so they're going to see that the the castle walls or the town walls are down and they're going to try and take advantage of it as much as they possibly can. And this is obviously going to make things very difficult and possibly, uh, you know, somewhat of a defeat on our hands. So let's see what happens. I am gaining a massive amount of cash every single day, by the way, thanks to all of our towns that we now have. Because we have certainly not done anything unscrupulous to gain them. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... You know, I kind of feel a little bit bad for those guys, to be honest, because I've literally just, you know, persuaded them to join us, and then all of a sudden I go, 
oh, you know what? I think we should part ways. And then they literally go, oh, oh, okay then. And then we just take their thief and then they're kicked out. You know, it kind of makes me feel a bit sad, but uh, I just got to remember that they are just AI and they're not real. So, you know, it's, it's okay. And I mean, to be fair, they are Vlandians. You know, they are Vlandians. They'd probably do the same to their own mothers, to be honest. You know, they probably would do that. They are uh, kind of ruthless in that, uh, in that aspect. Most of the time, dependent on... You know, because there's a lot of infighting, you know, according to the lore. You know, according to all of their... Uh, backgrounds and, and histories and things like that. They they do have a lot of infighting between them. Can I do any damage to those enemies over there? That is the question. Ow! How dare you? Who who is shooting me? Who is shooting the great the great Barney? Mm. I almost almost forgot what my name was there for a second. Okay, wait a minute. Can I go for a snipe? Yes, I can. Oh, yes. That is the kind of thing I want to see. Thank you very much. Nice. Another one. And we actually leveled up as well. So that's going to be the final point that we can put into tactic skill, I suppose. What is actually going on here? Why is my... Oh, this was destroyed. Okay, that's interesting. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's cool. I mean... To be fair, it's not cool for me because my cover has now been completely eliminated, as you can tell. But it is pretty cool in a sort of thematic way, you know, to have the enemy actually end up destroying some of your environmental protection. Yeah, this is not. This hasn't got the same punch, you know. Using a bow just doesn't have the same punch as using a ballista. I mean, obviously. I mean, why would it, right? Oh, almost. Okay, we're going to just reload. Go for one more shot. Nice. Okay, that will be it. That will be it for me. I'm not going to be doing any more with that. And, uh, oh, the battering ram does seem to be making its way here. I'm a little bit worried about this. How many have we killed, by the way? It feels like we really haven't killed that many. No, we haven't. As you can see, wow, we really have not killed that many at all. This guy, is he actually doing anything? It feels to me like he hasn't really done much. The guy that's been on the ballista all this time. Seems like he, oh yeah. I mean, I'm not really doing much saying that, you know. There we go. That's the kind of thing you want to see, you know. You want to literally get multiple kills with this weapon because it is just capable of so much. You want to try and maximize its efficiency, but unfortunately some of the time you just can't, you know? Some of the time you can't. Anyway, let's see what I can do here with my regular bow. I might be able to get a couple of headshots at least. And it seems like it, it, ha it has indeed gotten our, our gate down, which is going to be kind of interesting. Okay, let's jump out here. Strong legs. Yes. Strong legs. One of the best perks ever for me. And wait a minute, didn't they destroy one of our walls? So why are they not, why are they not using that opening? That's a bit weird, right? I was 100% assuming that they would be coming over here and just automatically getting inside because one of the wall sections was still destroyed from the, uh, from the siege that we, we did, you know, just beforehand. So that's a little, little weird, right? Uh, I, I don't know why that's happening, but okay. I mean, I, I, I'm not complaining, you know. I'm, uh, I'm literally just saying, okay, that's that's a bit strange. Ow. Yeah, there's a lot of enemies with ranged weapons. Very, very eager to eliminate us. And hello, sir. Yes, that fellow is also very eager to eliminate us. Oh! 
All right, so I think it's about time that we basically just let our forces rip and we are just going to completely go outside and murder every single person that we can find here. I mean, generally, I feel like being in this bottleneck is um, not even bad because I, I would... Oh, wow. Okay. I got shot in the face. Well, that was not particularly good, but there you go. We actually did end up achieving victory, a Vlandian Banner Knight, and a... Hmm, and an Imperial Elite Cataphract will be my choices. And we're going to be going for some writing skill for them, tactics, and I suppose steward sounds good. Mm, yeah, something like that, I guess. Okay, so we'll go for that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look of the uh, the lay of the land, basically. We're going to take a, take a look at that. Calatild, hmm, Calatild was actually in this army, if you can believe it. So that means that I'm going to theoretically have the ability to speak to her now. And then we might be able to persuade her to join us, which is exactly what we want to do. Okay, so... Otherwise, let's just go into the dungeon here. I'll place all these units in there. And then we will uh, go to Improved Garrison because there's something that I want to do pretty badly here as well. I'm just going to increase this to 240. I feel like we just have way too many prisoners in here after all. And I might have to transfer some of them to Praven or something like that because this is just way too, um, should we say, tempting. It's just way too tempting for people, you know. They're going to come along and they're going to they're gonna see how many people are in the prisoner's hold. And they're going to think to themselves, wow, this is crazy. I'm going to go in there and, you know, see what I can do. Oh, okay, Ostakin. Wait a minute, what? The owner of Ostakin? I thought I was the owner of Ostakin. Uh, okay, I'm going to give it to Dream. Uh, I'm going to see how he how he does. I mean, if he betrays me, then I will hunt him down and I will execute him. You can mark my words on that. Any companion that betrays us, unless it's Polmark, and unless it's Lundana, and unless it's the Sh Shalasa brothers, and uh, yeah. Anyway, the point is, if it's a random companion that we've basically just met, like a couple of you know days ago or whatever then i'm i'm gonna try and hunt them down and execute them but if it's polmark for example i'm going to maybe just keep him prisoner or something i i, I don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see anyway let's have a look here mm, reduce fortification bonus in simulations by 20 percent increase fortification bonus in simulations by 20 percent or parties that you've called to your army move 10 percent faster while moving to the army and 15% less influence required per party to call to your army. Okay. I quite like the increased speed for parties to move. I think that's actually pretty cool. Uh, so I'm probably going to take that, actually. Yeah, I'm going to take that. And we're going to go for another point in tactics. Uh, actually, I want to go for another point in social here rather than cunning. Because... I would like to get my trade skill to 300 as fast as possible, but obviously I'm not even entirely sure whether we even have a caravan up and running at the moment. So it would probably be a good idea for me to take a look at my clan screen, take a look at the members here, because I'm going to have a look. Oh, Atalon. Atalon is still a prisoner. He's a prisoner of looters. Are you serious? Okay, so he's still a prisoner, unfortunately. So let's have a look. Anyone else? Hologen? Hologen is last seen at Revel. Okay, so she's also been defeated. Let me see if I can get anyone else that actually has a decent trade skill. Ethan Bold, he was last seen at... Oh, well, he's obviously the... I mean, how stupid can I get, really? He's the governor, of course. He's the governor, so why would I make him a caravan master? That makes no sense. Let me see if anyone else has any trade skill. It's highly unlikely if they have any trade skill, but wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. It, wasn't there someone that I made really, really good? Who is that again? Is it one of these guys? Mm, it could be this guy. Olgaric the Miller. Oh, actually, no, wait. Olgaric the Miller's son. That's actually a super weird, funny name. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I'm going to make him the, the caravan, um, caravan master for this. And we're going to speak to this fellow. Hello there. Better troops. Okay, so uh, the Miller's son, right? Yes, the Miller's son. So where is he? Wow, I have a lot of... Yes, I have a lot of companions. Okay, there we go. 
Okay, so there, there's a caravan. The caravan's going off, and uh, should we actually create a create a party? Maybe, maybe create a party. Maybe that would be kind of cool. Uh, wait a minute. No one's being the surgeon right now. It seems like Dareem was the surgeon before, but now Amalgam, Amalgam is going to be the surgeon. That sounds pretty good to me. Okay, so let me see here. Who do we want to make into a party leader? Let's see who's good at doing things like that. Uh, ooh, this guy's fantastic. Okay, yeah. Jame, Jame the shark. You will be our new party member, and I will give you a bunch of very, very slightly not too good units. There we go. Yes, fantastic. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can we can we actually do this? Uh, I don't really want to give him militia. That's the problem. I don't want to give him militia at all because I personally feel like militia are a waste of a of a unit, basically. But this is pretty much all I have available unless I want to give him my really high tier units, which I suppose I really should uh, if I want him to do well, I guess. And there we go. Okay, so he now has 59. And what we're going to do is we're going to call for an army as well. So let's create that. He's going to be joining us. There we are. And there we have it. Okay, fantastic. So he's now going to be joining us. And now we're going to be gaining leadership, which is great. So otherwise, let me take a look at Calatilt. Let me see if I can remember what I'm supposed to be doing here. Okay, so she seems to be back on her feet. Hopefully she's not part of an army just yet. No, she is not part of an army. Great, look at this. Oh, yes. 57%. Wow, 57% has been very lucky for us in this episode. Very nice indeed. Okay, so she's obviously going to be joining us. And boom, one dinar. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, so wait a minute, wait a minute. So now she has joined. That means that uh, this town down here has now been taken and I will propose to expel her from the faction. Indeed, there we go. So she has now been expelled and now, well, now that now that's basically all that's left is Turby Castle, Callias Castle, Verixand Castle, Hongard and Galend. Now obviously Galend is owned by Durthart himself, which is obviously going to be a little bit difficult for us to accomplish anything with, with him. And look at this. They're now proposing peace, which I am actually not sure whether I should do. Uh, I'm thinking. Okay, so here's the thing. If I decide to do this, we may not have another enemy for a little bit of time. I could always declare war against someone, I suppose. But we're also leaving the job half finished. Which is kind of not really, eh, not really good for me. I'm gonna say no for the moment because I would like to at least eliminate this guy and take Varex and Castle if at all possible. Okay, let me see. There we go. Nice little auto resolve for you, sir. Goodbye. I will take the prisoners. And I actually did actually. Yes, yes. I wanted to go into Praven. Okay, I made a bit of a bit of an error there. I uh, got a little bit sidetracked with all these people. Aha, Vata is coming in here. Okay, that's going to be kind of interesting. I'm going to just be donating a little bit of extra cash over here, and then we're going to be going into the garrison. Okay, so. I want to try and recruit as many people as possible here. I'd like to get high tier units if I can. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's going to have to do some of these guys, I guess, as well. There we are. Okay, that's basically all I can do. We're going to go into the dungeon, though, because we do have a number of prisoners that I can then place in there. There we are. All right, so let's wait here for some time. Let's see what this guy decides to do. He's going to go to Japan Castle, isn't he? Maybe I should try to beat him there. I actually have a pretty strong army in comparison to him now as well. That's kind of interesting. Okay, I'm really surprised that he didn't decide to try and cut me off. Uh, it's kind of a bit weird that he didn't. But is he going to do that thing that the AI usually does where, you know, as soon as they see someone there, they run away. But then as soon as they see that person leave, then they go back. 
Is that what's going to happen? Yeah, I, I assume so. I'm going to make myself the uh, the owner of this town down there, Calatild's former town. Okay, yeah, we're fine. And we're going to do that ransom there. All right, so yeah, every place that we have so far taken seems to be pretty well defended with the exception of Drapand Castle at the moment. Seems like my improved garrison is not doing... Uh, such a great job there just yet, but it will it will get done. It's just a matter of time. That's the problem, you see. Okay, we're going to destroy the walls here because they only have 30,000 HP. Should be pretty easy for us to do, but it is going to be a bit of a time... Yeah, sort of a time-limited opportunity because we really do not want Trapad Castle to be attacked. What's actually going on here with these guys? Are they coming over here to try and stop me? That's really weird. Okay, I'm just going to go in then. I'm just going to go in. I would have 100% assumed that he would have gone for Trapand Castle because we are not there anymore. What's By the way, what's going on with me literally spawning in this direction? Did you see that? I literally spawn in this direction. I'm now looking over here for some reason instead of looking straight forward towards the thief. I mean, I know I mentioned that in a previous episode as well, but still, it's, it's kind of kind of strange. Anyway... Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to try and use my bow a little bit more as well, but obviously I can't do that until we are in a little bit more range here. And uh, maybe... Okay, that's not working. There we go. Well, that was pretty simple, wasn't it? Yes, we've already gotten through the gates, and now we're going to be able to do massive damage with our mace. And hopefully... Uh, hopefully that's it, actually. Oh, I, I actually wanted to try and murder those guys, but unfortunately, yeah, I was in super speed mode, and, uh, well, you can imagine how difficult it must be to fight at what, I don't even know how fast it goes, but there we have it. Nice, good amount of influence is now ours, and we also have some additional units here. I'm actually not entirely sure whether we should take these units. I think I will take a couple of them, because, I, as I said before, I would like to try and diversify quite a bit with the amount of different cultures that we are currently utilizing. Also, by the way, the reason why I didn't want to use My Little Warband is literally not because the mod is not good, because I've said many times that I personally think that it's basically one of my favorite mods, but it is purely for the fact that I thought that maybe companions would turn out to be super, super strong with Distinguished Service, and with My Little Warband, it basically just makes it so that you can customize your units, and they're going to be just so strong as it is, and then to have those units graduate to be distinguished service companions, that's basically game over right there. Like, as soon as I get, I don't know, 50 of those guys, it's basically game over, because I could probably take on, well, not any size army, but if, if I basically made them all into, let's say I made 30 into archers and 20 into heavy infantry or something like that, I could probably win against a lot of really, really large armies and things like that. So generally, that's the reason why I didn't want to use my little warband, because it is just so incredibly powerful to be able to customize absolutely every single thing about your, uh, your, your units and their loadouts and their stats and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. So yeah. But it is highly recommended. I would definitely highly recommend getting My Little Warband if you're playing the game right now because it is just a fantastic mod. It really allows you so much freedom. It really does. Anyway, let's just place these guys back in here. Uh, I think Improved Garrison is not working just yet, so let's see what I can do about that. Let's just recruit here. I'm going to just basically slap as many units as I can in each of these garrisons and... If they're going to be super expensive eventually, then I'm just going to hand them off to someone else and then they can pay for them and, and deal with them and all that stuff. That's basically how we're going to do it. So let's wait here for some time. This guy's obviously going to besiege it. I mean, I mean, why wouldn't you, right? I mean, being him, why would you not, to be honest? Okay, so wait a minute. Turby Castle. Let's have a look who owns this. Ospia. Is Ospia in here? He's not. So technically I could send a messenger to him, but I don't think I can even speak to him at the moment because we are in siege. So it's probably not going to work at the moment. Oh, increase renown gain from battles by 50%. That sounds super fun. I'm going to take that. Thank you. 
And there we go, he's going in. He's going in once more. Okay, yeah, well, obviously, we had a pretty easy time of getting inside the gates. Did you see that right there? You see those units? That was hilarious. They literally spawned on top, but because we have so many archers, some of them literally just fell straight down. That was amazing. You should probably just rewind the video if you didn't see that, because that was hilarious. They literally just spawned in midair and then just went whoosh, all the way down to the ground. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, that kind of thing has happened in Warband as well. So it's not, you know, it's not unique to Bannerlord. But yeah, generally, that, that kind of thing does happen. Especially in Sieges, you know. Because if you recall, or if you have played Warband in the past, or if you've seen a series of mine, if you have a large enough army and you've increased your battle size, because obviously by default the battle size is 150, um, but if you increase your battle size to something like 300 or 350 or 400, something like that, and you are actually fielding an army of that size, then you will definitely see some units spawn in a position that they can't get out of, you know what I mean? So it really makes things a little bit uncomfortable, but yeah, that can happen. And that's exactly the kind of thing that happened here. But thankfully they are not stuck and they can actually continue moving around on things. Anyway, I'm gonna get on the ballista here because I find it just so much fun. Oh, so satisfying. You know, I don't know about you, but I personally feel like it might be pretty cool to have destructible bridges and things like that as well. Because, for example, what if you had trebuchets or catapults or something like that on the walls, and the enemy is trying to come across these wooden bridges and things like that? It kind of makes sense for you to be able to destroy them, no? At least I think so. Probably be pretty fun to be able to do that. I'm going to literally do this.
Oh, I got shot. Did you see that? Yeah, I literally got shot right there. I don't even know what I got shot by, but I thought that was actually really fun. I don't know. I thought that was really fun. V very inefficient. Don't get me wrong. I know. I know there's probably going to be someone... <laughs> You know who you are. There's probably going to be someone that will literally just go, you know, that that was not the best tactical, strategical decision that you could have made. You know, yeah, they, I mean, I know, I know. There is going to be someone that will say that. But generally, I think that's a lot of fun going outside the walls. I think what I should have done, to be honest, is uh, just basically tell my units to just charge, you know, just tell my units to just charge and then I can run alongside them. But generally, we won anyway, and it wasn't really... Um, wasn't really close. We did a uh, pretty significant amount of damage to the enemy. Anyway, let's uh, get an Imperial Elite Cataphract there and a Palatine Guard. That sounds pretty good to me. And we'll go for Tactics, Athletics, and Scouting. Same thing with this. There we go. And there we are. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and as you can see, look at that. We literally lost a grand total of literally six. Six units. That's crazy that's really really crazy okay so now we're just going to be letting every single person go and bear in mind that i can now speak to uh speak to that guy right speak to the guy that owns uh, turby castle i'm actually not entirely sure who it is anymore because i literally forgot in that um rather enjoyable siege uh ospia ospia wait a minute does he own it he apparently does hmm Interesting. Okay, well, let's go into the dungeon here, and we will just put all the prisoners in there as well. And we're just going to check. Okay, yeah, he still is unable to be spoken to. He does own Turby Castle, so that's good to know. I guess I just have to wait a little bit of time then. Yes, just wait a little bit of time, and then his, um, no doubt his messenger should become available once again and look at that they, they're willing to once again make peace i am unfortunately not willing to do that so we are just going to oh ormond fart castle was actually taken that's interesting okay well i don't really mind i mean to be fair i wait wait a minute wait a minute who who actually what is he still a part of our no he is still a part of our faction where is he though because he literally had this as his um, as his fief. Ormonfard was his fief. But apparently that got taken somehow, and now he owns Ostakan instead. Okay, that's that's that that's very strange and a bit disappointing to be honest. Because I actually thought that he would be uh, pretty good at um, doing what he needs to do, but uh, unfortunately that doesn't seem to be the case. Anyway, we'll see how he does, and I'm going to be making a bunch more uh, as and when I am able to get the influence required, because bear in mind you do need to have 500 influence to be able to create a clan. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.